Well, today I have with me Adam Gerke and Monica Zelik, uh, director and writer of uh, Getting Away and star of Getting Away. How are you guys tonight? Good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Doing awesome. That's great to hear. It's a rainy, rainy day in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's raining in Toronto, too, so it's kind yeah. of meh. Yeah, it's always, I would say it's five days of the week it rains in Ottawa. Now, let me ask you, do you find that to be, uh, do you find that to be something that, uh, puts you down, or do you find that to be, uh, maybe inspirational? They're both. I don't know. The sunny day is the best, but then, if it's, like, raining at night, you're like, I'm gonna play video games. Yeah. You know? Yeah. As to the ambiance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start with you real quick, Adam. Um, just something that I like to get from people before we get into the meat of things is, like, your elevator pitch. What the, I, I'd like to know more about you. So, just maybe like a thirty seconds to a minute. Just talk about yourself as a junk shy. Right. The thing I'm the best at. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I've been filmmaker for over 10 years now. I uh, went to school in Toronto, or Toronto, as you say down in the States. And uh, yeah, like uh, right out of film school, I was able to make uh, a feature. It's like a really low budget indie action thing, but it was able to be picked up by E1, which is uh, pretty cool. And then uh, after that, I was like, you know, I've done a bunch of projects. I have a production company here in Ottawa. I do like real estate stuff or corporate stuff or music videos, basically everything um and uh as part of it i get to make uh make movies and uh, one of those movies is what we're here to talk about today is getting away it's a short film a horror short that uh, i'm really proud of and uh, i'm really proud of the work everybody put into it so. monica um yeah a little bit about myself i guess um i've always liked acting singing dancing ever since i was a little kid always been involved in the arts um with two older brothers it was either get into sports or play video games i went the video game route um started doing like a little bit of the streaming and playing video games and getting into cosplay and stuff like that eventually um touring north america doing conventions all the comic cons and uh doing some acting on the side started in college with short films and uh actually met adam for the audition for his feature film uh sir johnny and the curse of the antiquenched and that's uh where we we met up and that the rest is history as they say what are you what are you playing right now um, honestly, I am getting back into the old stuff that I'm really comfortable with, like Halo and Halo Wars, and then my buddy talk, showed me a website or an app or something that you can download where you can build your own Magic the Gathering decks and play online. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's not anything oh, cool. exciting and new. I know Crash Bandicoot is out right now, I should probably be playing that, but... Uh, yeah, I'm stuck on the old stuff for right now. And poker. There's nothing wrong with that. You can, they're classics for a reason, you know? Right. So, we're good because we're editing. I just, my, my handwriting is terrible. Um, <laughs> I've got doctor handwriting too. Yeah. Without what the MD. Did you write? I didn't write anything. I, that's why I type. Ah. Uh, this is how I type, by the way. Did you do the, the dinosaur, the, the dad, the dad version? No, I, no, I, 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 I can use all my fingers. Alright. I play guitar. I, I'm oh, there you go. I thought those were all just for show. My bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do, do you play, do, I mean, do you write your own music? Do you, uh, do you play, like, in front of people? Is it just a hobby? I used to. I used to play in a band, uh, years ago when I was, like, 18, 17. We played in, like, pretty heavy metal band like it was a uh, it was a lot of fun while I played we had the dream of you know being touring band we, we played in a lot in Canada like in just our area but uh, I don't know people get older being in a band is like dating five people with like ego and identity problems and <laughs> it's like a whole nightmare to be in a band 
And, uh, but yeah, it just was one of those things where everybody kind of got old and went to school. And, like, the last show I played, it was like my only real rock star moment. We sold out this giant venue and uh, we played this crazy show, a smash guitar, smashed all our equipment. It was like the best. <laughs> <laughs> and even though that one, that one might not have worked out, you're, you're still preserved pursuing your dream so yeah exactly yeah. and you know what like i'm still able to make music like uh, the feature that i did uh, i wrote some a few like rock songs in there that kind of like are in the background that were, that were kind of funny to put in but yeah i still still get to play music and now especially with technology right like all the technology like i'm able to work on something here and send it to somebody like four hours away and they can like sing and write music to it and send track back and we can like work on it so it's, it's amazing yeah it really is the world is as big as it's ever been but it feels smaller so yeah yeah it's great um so getting away it's a horror film yeah right? and the thing i've noticed when talking to people uh film scholars teachers professors whatever people people who would call themselves cinephile horror is very much looked down on so i think so yeah do you think, i mean i mean what do you think do you think it's not well no i i don't know you're telling you're talking to teachers and, and scholars uh, i guess i i don't know i i never look down on a first this is just me personally but i never look down on a genre like like uh, I think so. Like something that that caught my eye recently was uh, Tyler Perry got that award uh, at the Emmys, right? Like sort of a lifetime achievement thing. And like a lot of those same people shit all over Tyler Perry for what he does, but he made this amazing thing. I don't really like his movies, but he made his own audience. He did his own thing outside the system when everybody was telling him he shouldn't or and couldn't, and he did it. And now it's done. Those same people that t- told him he shouldn't, uh, you know, they're like. Well done. So I feel like that's similar with horror, right? Like, people maybe make fun of horror and some horror is cheesy, but every now and then there's one that catches your eye and you're like, oh yeah, that was really good. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Same with like a Lifetime movie. My mom loves those movies. Well, but you know, horror is that genre that you can kind of make fun of with like movies like freaking Sharknado and Teeth and like, I feel like that's why you think it's like negative, but I, I kind of like, I like the cheese. I like the, the not, you know, B-movie kind of mm-hmm. eat the popcorn and make fun of the movie with your friends, but also get scared and I don't know. I mean, yeah. the people that, that look down on it or talk down on it, and this is any genre, I don't think they get it fully. Mm-hmm. I think exactly. that's good. But exactly. that's just my opinion. I absolutely agree with you. I was kind but of... I interrupt like, I interrupted no, your, uh, your no, train of thought. Where you, were you going with it? Oh, you, I mean, you hit it on the head. I was going to ask, um, I mean, why Why did you decide to work in it, even if it is in this one instance? Because it is, in my experience, I, I mean, when I went through school, people were telling me not to pursue horror movies, that it was made out to be a lesser thing. And um, I find it interesting uh, to talk to people that go into it because I love it too. I absolutely do. I, I have, I mean, all these movies back here, they're pretty much all horror. And um, I just find it interesting to talk to people because it, it to, to me, the mainstream it is so other and people look at it differently. So I like to figure, you know, just figure out why people get into it. And uh, I feel like you did answer uh, very well. Yeah, I, look, man, like, if you like what you like, like, you like what you like, and, that, and that's okay. And I, I, I think what I'm learning about horror, the, the more I do it, like, like and, and talk to other horror fans, is that they are just that fans. And there are people that are unapologetically, they love horror, good, bad, it doesn't matter. And I think that's great. And I think not a lot of, not a lot of other genres have that type of fan base. So... I don't know. People might say, like, oh, yeah, like, horror, it's whatever. It's lower. It's a lower tier, but whatever. I don't know. I'm happy on the lower tier. <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I love that. I really do. Um, so, Adam, you wrote the film. As yeah. Well, as well as directed it. Yeah. 
Um, I will shout out uh, my other writing partner, Matt LaMarche. Uh, he, uh, he had a lot of input on the story, too. Um, I had the basic bones of it, and he added a bunch of different ideas. And, and I will say on the day, too, like, it is a collaborative medium. Like, everybody on set while we're shooting stuff, like, I'm never going to say no to a good idea, right? I'll always take credit for other people's ideas. <laughs> No, I, uh, yeah, it, it's just like a, it was a, it was the first like a silly idea I had of like a printer, like a wireless printer you can like send pictures to it, and I had this idea, I'm like, oh, somebody's sending threatening messages, but like ultimately like a printer's not very cinematic, you know, it's doo -doo -doo -doo. so I uh, went with the text messaging uh, <laughs> aspect of it. It was, uh, it was also a challenge, like, to speak to, to what you were saying, just just previously, like, uh, sorry, a bit of extra light on me there, um, like, I, I've heard that too, about horror being kind of like the sub-genre and all that, but I was like, well, if it's that easy, like, let's see how easy it is, and, you know, I found it difficult, but I also put some higher difficulty level to it by doing, uh, trying to have a no dialogue short, and seeing if I can tell a story with no dialogue, and seeing if we can accomplish that scare people you know get a reaction out of people making a horror so that's uh, that's kind of it and it came together really fast it's one of those things like i wrote it really really fast and even like putting together like pre-production like it came together like really really fast so monica um yes. as the lead actress in the film uh just take me through when you read the script, um, how did you go about taking what was on the page and putting that into your performance? So thankfully I didn't have to memorize any lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and just reading the script um, was just fun and exciting. And who doesn't want to be in a horror movie? So dream come true. Um, and just meeting up with Matt and Adam and talking about what we're going to film and just um, having the, the freedom to just kind of do your thing. And, and then um, obviously if I did horribly, Adam would have said something, I'm hoping. But I'm guessing I didn't do that horribly, clearly, because we're doing something right. Um, and yeah, it just ended up being a lot of fun, me being um, the, the victim, so to speak. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Now, you said that you uh, stream on Twitch or you stream. So I used to, um, a few, I guess last year we did, um, I work with a group called Realm Smith. So we live stream our D&D sessions. Um, so obviously with COVID and everything, so we're slowly going to get back into that and start live streaming the D&D the &D stuff again, which was also a lot of fun. Great. And you and you cosplay, right? Yes, definitely. Dressing up is so much fun. Yeah. Now, those two things, those two passions, along with uh, being an actress, do you, is there anything from streaming and cosplaying that any skills that you picked up that you can put into a performance that you use when you're acting, anything like that? And it's okay if the answer's no. That's, that's a good question, I guess. Um, with the, that's a great with, question. Right? Like, with, the, with the streaming and stuff, I guess it's just more practice of me being myself and... Um, I like telling jokes and I like being funny and very random. I'll always bust out random quotes and sometimes people get it and sometimes not and that's okay. Um, so if anything, I guess it would help me with just um, figuring out the more comedic timing of when to make comments and sharing that because there's five of us playing at the table. So knowing when to share that talk time because we can all talk all over each other the whole freaking night. So just sharing that space with everybody so everybody gets a turn to talk i guess would be something i got in my art said no yeah it's perfect i can um, uh, maybe speak to that a bit for you if you want sure Monica. yes but, uh, just something i've noticed is that like i would say there's a crossover a bit in some of the fact that you like model and you dress up and do all these things and you have to hold these strange poses 
And there is that crossover when we do like a genre piece or any type of horror where you're you're maybe holding a pose, a facial expression, something, and the focus is really tight, you know, and you have to hold that pose just to make that's sure true. the focus is right. Thank you. And that sort of I find translates a bit because you know a lot of film it's like I find it's these micro adjustments we're making all the time, and it's like camera has to be just like this the person has to be just like this it might be awkward pose to be like that in real life but then on the camera you know in the frame it looks it looks perfect so i I feel like maybe that subconsciously maybe that like translates in a way to true true and cosplaying you're you're playing a character the whole time anyway so that's that's definitely helps as well Mm -hmm. i will say too uh what i've noticed about your acting is it starts and stops like at action and cut. It's like your Monica, it does, it really your, does. your normal like self, and then it's like okay, you're scared. <laughs> That's no, my once, scare once face. the cameras are rolling and you tell me like it's go time, it's just like yeah, it's like go yeah, time. yeah, it's very different. <laughs> it's hard even just for myself because like we're all joking around on set constantly, but, like all for four sure. of us, and then it's like okay, now you're scared. After we were just like for the last half hour, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. feel like I feel like fear uh, is one of the harder emotions to fake. So, did you have trouble with that? or? No, just imagining someone literally after me and I'm all alone in this freaking house with... Yeah, that would, that would scare the crap out of me right there. I mean, yeah, a- absolutely fair. <laughs> um, and I, I will say, like, Afterward, uh, uh, you've heard the story a few times, Monica. But after we were done um, shooting, Matt Marsh was like, he, he remarked, and he was like, he's like, you notice we didn't have to do a lot of takes? I was like, oh yeah, this kind of like we just like, we, you know, we said what we wanted, we blocked it, and then it was like, if we had to do another take, it was cameras off or focus was off. Like we nailed it like really, really quick. And, and I know like that obviously speaks a lot to your your acting Monica but it's also uh, you know I felt like Matt and I communicated a lot before and I feel like we communicated a lot before how we we're going to execute shots and emotions and whatever so it's just one of those things that just went off really seriously. What a business. really good flow. Yeah it'll never happen again probably. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect storm. Yeah exactly. Well I promise we're getting towards the end I don't want to keep you too long. Hey man, we're no, no, we're as long as you want. We're here for you. Um, the press release I got said that you were in ten festivals. Is that? But yeah. you told me now beforehand. Thirteen, maybe. Like Ooh, 13. that's a good number. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it just keeps happening. Like I, I, I put this out in 2018. Um. So there's a, a festival close to where we're from uh, in Kingston, Ontario. And it's a festival I absolutely love. They're so great to us there. And uh, we filmed it not too, too far from Kingston. Um, and so it got in there pretty quick. And we premiered it there. And I, I just sort of thought, like, maybe it'll just have a thing here. And then we'll see what happens. But then it got into another festival and then another and another. And then, like, last Halloween, I, I, I put it out, like, publicly. Didn't think much of it. And then it just whatever it is the last two, three months, um, it's been getting requests to go in festivals, and it just keeps, like, snowballing. It just recently got an award for Best Cinematography, and I don't know, it's, it's wild. Like, I, I'm absolutely, like, blown away by, like, the reception of it. Everybody seems to really like it, so, um, yeah. I can speak more to festivals and experiences at film festivals, too, if you feel like. Sure, if you want to, I just want to say it must be a great feeling for the both of you to have put so much time and effort and love into something and then have that returned to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, Monica, Monica, you're only there for maybe one, the Kingston one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I've been to three of them, the one in Kingston, Hamilton, Ontario, that was an interesting one, they screwed up the projector. Um, and everything was zoomed in. So, like, if you think of the 4K, it was like just this. And, uh, it was a mess. Um, but uh, I was lucky enough too to go to uh, Pensacola, Florida, for a screening, and uh, 
that was pretty interesting. I got into the festival down there at their Pensacon, and uh, the uh, being part of the festival, you got a free pass at the Comic Con and like a deal on a hotel. So like, it was stupid not to go. It's January in Canada, you know. So um, yeah, it's neat. There's there's a ton of them I would have loved to have gone to, and, and now especially, it's just such like a you know kick to the shins like knowing like I could go to New York and watch my movie on a screen in New York but uh, yeah that's 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 rough but yeah are you guys working on anything right now I know that the world has been turned upside down but maybe you have something in the works that you can talk about that you want to talk about Monica anything <laughs> Um, honestly, I'm, I'm just working on my website right now and getting that out there, um, I guess to promote myself, and I'm, I'm really, really, really not good at promoting myself, so, yeah. Well, here you are, promoting yourself. <laughs> Thank you. So that's good. <laughs> Yay. We're, we're developing skills together, this is good. I appreciate it. Is it. A, it is a tough thing, right, to be like the yay me thing. I struggle with it too. I, I almost pretend I'm another person. Like right. I'm doing, I'm doing Adam Kirky's social media for him. <laughs> You're his personal assistant. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I gotta like think about it in my head. Because it, if it wasn't for like a film career or having to promote stuff, I would have no social media. I just don't care. Yeah. Like, I just don't give a shit. Uh, like Facebook, like I'll open it, look at a few things, check messages from friends. But like in terms of like seeking out stuff, I don't know. I just something about it, I just, it doesn't, like, if I'm going to post something, there's only about five or six people that I care if they see it, so I'll just, I'll send them that picture of the food I made, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm just like, hey, look at this, I made this brisket this weekend, it turned out pretty good, you know? Yeah. Or I'm usually with those people, and I've, I've made or done that thing with them, so, I don't know, I, yeah. I share that sentiment, like, it's, it's tough, it's hard. Oh, I completely understand it, too. It's not... I don't want to be on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. And usually it just makes me sad, so... Yeah, I will say, though, like, doing this movie and, and, and some of the, like, the feedback we've got online has been really positive, and that's been nice to see. And uh, I, I, the other thing is, I do a podcast with uh, the uh, my other writing partner there, Matt LaMarche, uh, Raiders of the Lost Commentary. And uh, a lot of that community seems really positive, and there's a lot of uh, just like positive feedback around around that. So like there are communities, and, and there are like a lot of positive things out there. People just being nice to each other, you know, out there. But you gotta go looking for it. Yeah. Monica, did you have something to say? I was gonna say I. This is. Um, so social media brings out new careers and a new career I learned about is people are like, oh yeah, Monica, you should be an influencer. I'm like, is an influencer, what, what, what am I influencing? It's like, oh, like people just send you free stuff and you post it on social media and then like, I'm like, that, that's a job? Like, what? I'm people make like six figures doing it. What? So I'm like, okay, how do... How do I get started? But then I'm so I'm very inconsistent with the social media stuff, and I won't post as often as I should. So I don't think I would be a good influencer. You gotta just get uh, you gotta get a just get your free Hootsuite account or Buffer account, and then just yeah load it I'm up. Too for the lazy. Week. I'm too lazy. Yeah. No, well, you're not gonna get that sweet Instagram no, money. No. No. No, I won't. Um, just starting to wrap things down real. quick. Um, is there anything that you you guys have uh, social medias? I even though we just you know dogged on it for like five minutes, but is is there any like, social media, um, any other projects like stuff? Just anything that you'd like to plug before? Yeah, I'll just say really quick. Yeah, like uh, we are planning with the success of this. Like it has motivated me to start writing a feature version uh, of Getting Away, so that's in the works. Um, I have another short that I'm just finishing up now. It's like a sci-fi family thing. Like, I jump around genres a lot. Um, and the other big thing is our, our the feature film we made, Sir John Ann and Kirstie Anyquench, topic of a whole other conversation, depending on how much time we have. But we made a feature film uh, here in Canada. Uh, it's about two brothers that save 
their city uh, from demons by staying drunk. So it's kind of like a silly comedy. Um, so that, and then yeah, uh, my podcast Raiders of Lost Commentary. If you like talking about movies, I have on other filmmakers, and I go in depth about uh, about their stuff. I just got one coming out this Monday uh, with this filmmaker from the UK. Um, he made this movie called Dare, and uh, his story is just like incredible. The movie is really really good. It's a, it's a horror movie, and uh, his story about it getting made and going to Bulgaria to make it and filming at the New Boyana Studios, which is, they're just, it's insane there. Uh, it, it's a, it was a cool one. And then also just Matt and I just talk about movies and, you know, complain about stuff or say how much we love stuff, so. Nice. Monica, same question. Uh, j- just for myself, just the follow me on the social media. My alter ego, also my gamer tag, is TH3Rogue. Um... And join me in my inconsistencies. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are pushing your influencer uh, goal. We, this, this is what we're doing right now. Awesome. Last Thank question. You. Yeah, absolutely. Last question. Is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about? We talk about the, the feature a bit. Sure. Because Monica's in that. Um, that was a fun project. It's out right now too. It's on iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo on demand. Um, yeah, that was a fun project. We filmed it in Kingston as well. Um, it's sort of like based in Kingston as well. Uh, we got to, I don't know how familiar you are with any Canadian stars, but, uh, we had, uh, John Dunsworth. He's like Mr. Leahy from Trailer Park Boys. He did the voice of Sir John A in the movie. And uh, Spenny from Kenny vs. Spenny. I don't know. Uh, oh, has been. Oh. Uh, this I love it. Has been upgraded by the host. Perfect. No, sorry. Um, anyway, sorry. Yeah, Spenny from Kenny vs. Spenny. He's in it for a bit. And Paul Spence. He's a. There's a funny movie that was made here in Canada called uh, Fubar, and he plays the dean in that movie. So we got him in our movie. He plays like this press strip club DJ. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun to make. It was a real labor of love, really low budget thing, but we pulled it off and managed to get like a uh, distribution for it. So Monica's in it; she's great in it. Uh, so if you liked her in Getting Away, you'll like her even more probably in uh, in Sir John. It's Anna. really really funny. It's a really funny film. Adam did not pay me to say that. It's <laughs> I didn't care at all to be in it either. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was a it was a fun thing to do and. Yeah, like, it took a long time to do, and it was like we'd film on weekends, like, when I had enough money to do so, or just things like that, so we had this great premiere, too, at the Kingston Film Festival. Again, those guys, they're so great to us there, and, uh, yeah, it was a good experience, so. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'll thank have you. To, uh, I'll have to check it out um, sometime soon. You said it was on uh, iTunes? iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo On Demand. The cheapest place to check it out is Vimeo On Demand. And, uh, yeah, and we sell DVDs and a bunch of stuff like that on, on the site. So Perfect. Uh, lots of, if people are interested to, like, the DVDs have a ton of behind the scenes, how we made it, pulled it off for, like, very little money. So, um, but, yeah, I will say to you, thank you for having us on your podcast. And uh, thank you for taking the time to check out the short. We, uh we really appreciate it. it. It's great. Oh well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. It's, it's really, really do appreciate it. Um, just real quick before we go, Monica, do you have anything you wanna? Um. <laughs> it's okay. Have a beer. Life is short. Enjoy the moment. Nastrovie. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you guys for uh, for sitting down and talking with me. I really do appreciate it. I'm actually standing. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Standing desk. Yeah. Good for your back. I have back problems, so, and I'm I'm only like 22, so maybe I should get a standing desk. It's up to you. <laughs> well, thank you guys.